All right. In this video, I'm going to show you uh, how to spray glaze. The first thing you need to do is choose the glaze that you'd like to use for the spray gun. You'll need this small screen that's hanging on the spray booth, a pitcher, uh, and one of the spray guns. You'll get the spray gun by um, giving me your phone uh, so that I can <clears throat> check a gun out to you. You'll mix the glaze first. I'm choosing a transparent color glaze. Uh, I'm going to mix that glaze and then I'm going to pour it through the screen uh, into the spray gun and you want to fill the spray gun about half. If there are any chunks in the glaze, the straining will keep them from going in the gun. Which Now we need to gun. attach the universal coupler to the bottom of the gun. You pull the bottom sleeve down that has a texture on it that uh, shifts down a little bit and that allows you to put the gun inside of the coupler. When you push it down, you let go of the sleeve, it should click on and lock on. If you don't pull the sleeve down, it won't attach and uh, you won't be able to get any air pressure through the gun. Once you have the gun attached to the universal coupler, you reach on the side of the spray booth and there is a switch that turns on a very loud fan. The reason I'm doing this voiceover and that will allow air pressure to go into the gun now, when you're spraying, you want to spray from one side to the other side. You don't ever spray directly at your project when you start. You spray from the left to the right or the right to the left, and you kind of overspray. So you never point the gun directly at your project and spray directly at it. You should probably spray two to three coats of a single color if you're planning on spraying it. It's really dependent on what glaze you use. When you're spraying the gun, there's a few different knobs on the gun. There's a knob on the top that adjusts uh, the spray pattern, either a fan or a cone, and then a knob below that that adjusts the amount of glaze that comes out with each spray. In just a second, I'm going to show you the different patterns on the wall so you can see which pattern there is. But when you are spraying something and you want to cover a large area, you want to use the fan shape. It's like a wider spray. And then if you're trying to spray a very specific location or trying to add a spiral or a decorative uh, kind of patterning or the glaze is really thick, you would turn that dial to make more of a, a cone shape that sprays a little bit more of intense amount in one location. If you're spraying clear, you want to use the fan because you'll get a much more even and thin application of glaze. When you're spraying the glaze, stand as far away as you can and don't put your face next to the glaze. When the vent is on, the aerosolized glaze won't be near your face. You can also wear a mask, which is a little bit safer. Now I'm spraying the glaze. You'll notice I sprayed off from one side to the other side, creating a pass, letting it dry, spraying from, in this case, right to left, slowly passing once, letting it dry, then twice, and then I just gave it a third little pass, uh, catching a missed spot. Now that I've sprayed the glaze on this section, if I was going to use another color, which I do on this project, I would clean the gun and then add another glaze to the gun and repeat the process of spraying two to three coats of glaze on it. I did a total of five different colors on this cup uh, and I cleaned the gun in between each. I did a demo for each class. So now I'm gonna show you how to clean the guns correctly. First, you want to pour the old glaze back into its original pitcher, and then you're going to take the strainer, the gun, and the pitcher, and the cap, and you're going to bring it over to the glaze sink where you'll start cleaning. When you're at the glaze sink, you want to turn the sink on and just rinse everything out. When you rinse out the gun, you want to make sure that you're <clears throat> rinsing everything thoroughly. You'll take the cap off of the gun, and then you'll let water run from one of the faucets while you squeeze the trigger of the gun through the gun, and that will let water build up in the reservoir that you put the glaze in, and eventually the glaze water will start running through the gun, which helps clean it. The last step to cleaning the gun is bringing it over to the regular faucet, taking the gun apart, uh, taking the reservoir off by spinning it, uh, and then the gun will have a little bit of glaze in it as well. And if you tap it on the counter, you'll notice you'll see like some glaze water come out. If you turn the sink on and let the water run, uh, you'll let the stream of water hit where the reservoir connected to press the handle. Uh, and then glaze water will run through 
uh, the gun the same way it did in the glaze sink. And then you'll let it run until the water runs clear. You'll tap it upside down again, uh, let water run through, and do that two or three times uh, and make sure the water runs through completely clear. And then give a clean water rinse to all the implements that we washed in the glaze uh, sink. The glazes have salts in them, and they're not really good for the metal of the gun, so we want to try to rinse off as much glaze as we can from everything that isn't plastic. Uh, when I check the gun, when you return it to me, I'm going to look to see if there's any glaze water in it. I'm going to take off the reservoir and tap it upside down, and I want to see clear water, if any, come out. Uh, if not, I'll have you uh, clean it again before I give your phone back. And then the gun will be reassembled and it'll be ready for the next use. If you're using the gun to spray another glaze, then you would be ready to put a new glaze in and start the process over again. I have more than one gun that can be checked out uh, if you want to work in a group of people. Uh, also, you can um, work with a group of people if you're all spraying like light blue on your project. You all spray the areas you want light blue, and then you clean the gun, and then you'd all spray uh, something that was uh, light orange or uh, you would spray black glaze on. It's more efficient as there's only one spray booth that when the gun has a certain color in it that everyone who needs to use that color can use it. So if you're all using clear, you don't need to clean it between each use. Just fill it with clear, use the gun for all the people, and once everyone's done using the clear, clean the gun correctly and return it back to me. There are a lot of right, techniques for spraying and layering so glazes. Spraying you can layer more so than two glazes spray by spraying, which you can't want to by dipping. You can spray multiple so coats. You can spray right. patterns on your projects. Um, when you are spraying a project, it always makes sense, if possible, to pour glaze on the inside first. So if you're glazing your coil pot, we do want to glaze the inside. So I suggest pouring the mystery glaze if you don't care what color is in there. Uh, and then uh, you can spray the outside however you'd like. Uh, it doesn't make sense to spray the inside. There's a high tendency you'll miss spots and also that it will shoot glaze back into your face. So enjoy using the spray booth and make sure you clean the gun.